I'm Tracy Potts, and I am the executive director of the Eisenhower Institute at Gettysburg College. We are welcoming today, I'm very excited to welcome the new mayor of the borough of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, with uh, mayor-elect Rita Freeling. She just won the election um, by what, by national standards, they call a bit of a landslide. And uh, we are welcoming her today. And also joining me is one of our student journalists, the editor-in-chief of the Gettysburgian, Phoebe Dasher. So welcome to both of you. Mayor, thanks for coming over and joining us today. Thank you. It's an honor and privilege to be here at the Eisenhower Institute because what a leader, and I understand that's one of the things you're doing here is helping develop leadership from his role in Normandy to his role in sending federal troops out to Little Rock, Arkansas. I like Ike. And also, he lived in Gettysburg. He absolutely did. Um, and he is the reason that we uh, pursue these, these uh, public policy programs and issues. Um, but today we get to talk about you. So I, I want to go back a little bit. Tell us how you got involved in this. You, you have such an interesting history. You've uh, done everything from being a news reporter, so you and I have that in common, uh, to uh, public, uh, public service. You were a park ranger at one point, uh, and now you're a mayor. Tell me a little bit about that journey and how you, how you got here and how you ended up running for mayor in the borough. Okay, part of my journey is I was a seasonal park ranger. I love history. And I grew up outside of Gettysburg, so I'm an area native, and I've just been involved in things. And my aunt and mother were very active in this community. So it's just been something of interest. And with my background and my personality, I like to be doing things. And I thought this was a great time to give back to my community and I, a community that molded me. And the college was also part of that because when I was younger, my mother used to bring us out here to cultural programs. And I would come here for plays, bullets, football, and basketball games. And I also think one of my most memorable experience at Gettysburg College was I saw the college production that included students and professors of Jesus Christ Superstar that was in Christ Chapel. A highlight. Wow. Of okay, but I just think that um, why I decided my aunt, who passed away last year, she always told me, you should be here at Gettysburg. And after she passed away, I thought, you know, because I took care of her, she had Alzheimer's. And I was like, I have a free time now, what should I do? And I saw that the position of mayor was open. I was like, let's try this and let's give back to your community. That's fantastic. So first thing I learned is that we need to make sure you get downstairs and get an orange and blue shirt if you don't already have one, <laughs> since you already have so many connections to the college. Wait, I have one more. That's really important. That was late, later in life. I married a great Gettysburg College graduate. My husband, oh. he graduated magnum cum laude from here. I was like, yeah, you're always up wanting me. But anyway, um, <laughs> his father was a professor here. Wow, wow. So you have a lot of ties to the college. Mm -hmm. um, Phoebe, I, I would, uh, I wanna give you a chance to, to hop in. And, and what I failed to say at the beginning is one of the reasons, a couple of reasons we wanted you here. Um, obviously you are the new leader of the borough, but you also have done so in an historic way. Um, this borough has never had a female mayor, nor has it ever had uh, a mayor of African-American descent. So you, um, and that's why we call today's program Breaking Barriers. Um, you've done so uh, just through your election. And so uh, looking forward, you know, we certainly want to recognize the historic nature of that. But Phoebe, hop in. I, I know you have some questions that you'd like to ask. Yes. Thank you so much, Mayor Freeling, for or Mayor elect Freeling, for being here today and for talking with us. I'm kind of interested in hearing a little bit more about what you were mentioning with your connection to the college and how Gettysburg College could be kind of implemented into your role as mayor and what you see the role of this institution being when you're um, in this position. Okay. And I would like to lay this out. My duties as mayor by code are. I, can, I have oversight of the police department, I can perform marriages, and I serve as an ambassador and advocate for Gettysburg. And I can also have a tie breaking vote on borough council. However, I would like to expand the second part, being an advocate and an ambassador for Gettysburg. Coming around to the college, I hope you guys are gonna invite me back for other programs. I would like to meet with permission of your administrators, maybe once a month with the students, Democrats and Republicans, because I think that was also part of my historic win 
people are tired of the polarization. And I reached across the aisle and asked what I would like to do and involved, I can come up with lots of plans, but I just don't like to say, well, this is what Rita thinks, because I have to figure out what other people are thinking too. So I think if we can interact with the college and just bring us all together as a grow, I, that's what I want to do and be an ambassador and advocate. And that means being an ambassador and advocate for college students because you're part of the borough. Absolutely. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. And a lot of, I know a lot of students at Gettysburg, um, we comprise a huge part of the voting population. So mm -hmm. our voices are so central in, you know, Gettysburg and uh, the way that the politics run. And so it's wonderful that you'll be reaching across the aisle and including us in that conversation. So mm -hmm. thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, and to Phoebe's point, we actually broke barriers last uh, last election when it came to uh, participation, not this past one, but two years uh, ago with the initiatives here on campus. So students are engaged and, and they want to uh, have a say. They are a big part of this community. And so it's really good to hear uh, that you want to spend time on campus. You obviously have history here uh, and hear from students as, as part of your constituency. So talk to me a little bit about the borough. I am new here. Um, so this is, is educational for me. Talk to me a little bit about the things that you think are important uh, as amb amb ambassador, as the ambassador, um, for people to know about Gettysburg and the things that you may want to address. I think what I can say, I think Gettysburg is the greatest small town <laughs> on earth. I just think it's wonderful. Can we quote you on that one? <laughs> Here's an interesting one. Yeah, no, I just love, and I, whenever I go in there, I say, I have a Gettysburg address. <laughs> Corny, but it's true. People know where I'm from. And I just think it's a wonderful area. And that includes all of Adams County, even though I don't have um, any jurisdiction there. But I think the thing to promote in Gettysburg, it is actually just a small town, homey atmosphere for the most. Now, I know people come here because of the battle, and I was a seasonal park ranger, and that's important that it's the community of Gettysburg. And I think we come together and help each other and are very friendly. Um, just opposite, I was sitting outside the library the other day, and people just stopped by. And that even before becoming mayor-elect, I just found people in Gettysburg to just be very, very, very kind and open. So it's a warm community, should I say? And we have a lot of activities here because of the college. So there's a lot of things to do because, correct me if I'm wrong, the college owns the Majestic Theater. We do. It's a cultural thing here. And the college has an influence on the town and how it's taken, how it's perceived. So I think we can just all work together. And I want to get out there and make sure that everybody knows about what Gettysburg is and be, I even plan, I hope, to be able to go out to tour centers and stuff and talk about Gettysburg and what we have to offer. So while you're here visiting about the battle, come downtown and see Gettysburg. The downtown is really a pretty downtown. Um, I, I was uh, here. I can't wait for the holidays because I, it, you know, I know it's going to be all dressed up. It'll be really pretty. Look, Phoebe, weigh in on this, um, uh, please, if you'd like. But one of the things you talked about was reaching across the aisle. Um, I, I come from 18 years as a, as a Washington journalist, and we hear a lot about that, right? Reaching across the aisle to people of different perspectives, um, um, different political views, um, that type of thing. I heard you uh, during your campaign talk about bringing people together. I heard that repeatedly. You've talked about that today. What are your thoughts about how you do that when sometimes um, people's ideas are very different and very polarized, particularly, you know, um, between people who live in the borough, people who are on campus. Many people have different ideas about um, what their city, what their communities, what their state should look like. What are your thoughts about um, the how of how we do this? Phoebe, please weigh in if, if you have some thoughts from a, a student perspective on that. Yeah, that's that's a great starting point. Go ahead. Yeah. I think the how is where I ran my campaign. It's community safety. We all have to feel safe in our community. And also it's about collaboration and forming some kind of consensus. We all have different ideas and we all have different opinions and sometimes they clash, but we have to come together because remember a house divided cannot stand. A house divided is against itself cannot stand. So, and not everybody's going to agree but you have to respect people for their positions. 
and understand how to get along for lack of better phrasing. Because I have many friends that are very, very far right, and I have friends that are far left. I respect their opinion. And they said, you know, it's really amazing that you can sit here and listen to us and not criticize us or judge us. And I said, it's your opinion. I respect it. And we all have to live together. So, I mean, I, maybe it might sound high in the sky, but I think how you bring people together is realize we're not all going to agree. People and families don't agree, but they learn to get along. Yeah. We're about to learn that. It's almost Thanksgiving. Those conversations always happen after dinner, right? Where after at the Thanksgiving table. And, and you know, you walked right into something that is core to what we do at the Eisenhower Institute, which is promote nonpartisan civil discourse. People have to, as you said, um, really listen and, and respect opinions. But Phoebe, you were about to hop in with a thought. Yeah, I was just going to mention the same thing, that one of the core um, values here at Gettysburg is civic engagement and listening across the aisle. Um, and I think it's really interesting, Mayor Elect Freeling, that you mentioned how listening is such a huge part of bringing people together and collaborating. Um, do you have any sort of plans and things in mind for how you are going to engage, not just across the aisle and not just to listen to everybody and collaborate, but to make sure that you are showing people how their voices are being listened to and how they're um, being heard? Well, I could always do more interviews and come out <laughs> to the college and go talk to your newspaper. But also I think it's important that just to let people know they're being listened to and when necessary, have maybe public meetings and that could be fun, bring people together and listen to them. So people know that their voices are being heard and when necessary, serve as an advocate for the town because I do have work with borough council and other officials in the area. Say it's something that needs to go to another elected official and if I think that, and I always, I believe in asking permission instead of begging forgiveness, uh, talk to that person or give them direction and say, this is your concern. This is where you should go. These are the people you should interact with. These are the other elected officials and maybe they can help you. And I think that's a way same as a facilitator and also let people know that I don't have all the answers and I do make no promises. People say I'm a bad talk politician, but I'm not a politician. I was a candidate, I'm a mayor elect. You listen to people, you respect them, and make sure that their voice is being heard by not saying, well, yeah, 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 we'll do this. Uh, what do you think needs to be done? And how can I do it? And then I would give that person feedback or group that this is what can be done and this is what can't be done. But I did hear you. Can That's I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question about the, the economy? And I know that this is not uh, a burden that you share fully uh, as mayor, but this, this is something that the borough council will, will be dealing with. You know, as somebody who's new to the area, uh, when I first came to visit last month, I went to get a cup of coffee in the morning and the coffee shop was closed and the hotel told me, oh, they don't have enough people to work in the morning. There've been staffing issues. I know we on campus have experienced that. There are um, uh, positions, support positions that have been open for a while um, that the college has been advertising for. And this is not unique um, in any way to Gettysburg. This is something that, you know, I saw the same thing when I went to visit my mom in North Carolina. This is, you know, these staffing issues are a national uh, problem, but as it relates to the borough, um, what are your thoughts about what's happening, the impact that it's having on the city, and what, if anything, um, the city leadership can do to either get some of these positions filled or make sure that commerce and business can continue to thrive here, given you know the the national things that we're seeing, the staffing shortage, supply shortages, and things like that. Okay, that is outside of my realm as mayor, and I am talking to. Um, I am aware of the budget issues and the rev town revenues. And yes, that is a national issue, staffing shortages, because I'm amazed when I go downtown and see that restaurants are closed Monday, Tuesday, some are even closed Wednesday. And that has to be having an economic effect on our revenues, not revenues here, but business, businesses here and keeping business open, because that's a drawing point in Gettysburg. 
So I guess plans to meet, because remember, I'm still learning um, about these issues and figure out what they are. And that's what I plan to do because I'm sure it's having an impact. It well, it affected you by the fact that you went to get a cup of coffee and it was good. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And that goes to hotels and that national staffing shortage. It, it just amazes me. I read about it. Yeah. So I appreciate your transparency because I have told people the same thing as, as the brand new director of EI. I have often told people, so I'm learning. Um, I'm on a learning curve about some things, um, but you know, that's something again, I, and I certainly didn't want to pinpoint Gettysburg because this is something that is happening, uh, you know, in neighboring uh, towns, in boroughs, in neighboring states. Um, but as an ambassador uh, for Gettysburg, you know, you will have a unique opportunity uh, to try to get people to come here and, and attract them to those, those restaurants and those coffee shops. Yes, I agree. And I have to say this, and thank you for recognizing my transparency, because I am still learning. I'm on a learning curve. And even after I learn, I like to say this to people, I don't know everything. <laughs> but what I don't know and need to know, I can learn. Isn't that what you do in college? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, we've got like a minute or two left. Phoebe, you get the last question and the last word. Thank you. So Mayor Freeling, I was just wondering if you could lay out just a few of your campaign promises and the things that you're bringing to the table here in your uh, role as mayor. Okay, I don't have any campaign promises. <laughs> My statement was that I will listen. You talk, I listen. All right, and I just, um, could you ask your question again? I'm sorry. I was just wondering some of the things that you bring to the table as mayor and that you would like to address in this role. Okay, I think what I bring to, my, to the table is my background and experience. And I think that was another thing that made this election a historic victory because a lot of people said, look at her background. She is well qualified for this position. Mm -hmm. So I hope to bring some of my experiences like being aware of working how the state government works, also um, legal concerns and reading codes, because nobody mentioned I'm an attorney, don't hold that against me. But um, just being aware of things and seeing how things can work and understanding my limitations as mayor. That's why I said I made no promises, because people can say, oh, they want this done, that done, and everything else. And it's not really going to work because there are state laws, there are borough codes. You just can't say something without knowing and researching it. So I think that's what I would like to say I bring to the table. And it's the fact that I'm willing to go out in the community to different institutions and speak and meet with people. It's outside of the borough, but there's a National Park Service. There's Gettysburg College. There's a Lutheran Theological Seminary. I think they changed the name of that, but there are just various groups that I think need to be heard. And I think it's my willingness to go out and listen to people bringing together and also letting people know about community resources. I think a lot of people don't know resources that are available in this community. And I, somebody told me something, oh, here's one. What about college students? But here we go, I have to figure out the law, your rules and regulations, but becoming involved, do you have internships within the community? Do yeah, you? yeah. That's good. See, I don't know everything. Maybe yeah. we can find some new ones. <laughs> <But we're, laughs> we would love that. Sounds like we have a lot to talk about. We are so uh, appreciative of your time today. Thank you for joining us, Phoebe. Thank you for weighing in on the conversation and joining us as well. Um, we're going to wrap up because you have another engagement here on campus and we are um, wanting to make sure you get to that. But tune in um, from time to time. We will do Lunch and Learn here on EI Live. We've got another couple uh, that are coming up. Uh, we're going to be talking with one of our EI experts in a couple of weeks on national security issues, which should be really interesting. So uh, we'll make sure to let everyone know about that. But thank you, Mayor-elect Freeling, for your time. Thanks, Phoebe. And thank we'll you. see you guys later. Enjoy your lunch.